Good evening, YouTube. It's uh, Bebop or AJ Killer, aka Super Vowel, with an update. Uh, before I show you the update, I uh, just want to show you guys what came in the mail recently. I mean, I don't really have any more of these, but I got Boko with the gray top. The one with the white top is too rare and is identical to this Boko, just a different top. He's right in front of my Tomy Boko, my only Tomy engine. I also got a 1993 Henry, old style Henry, with the wooden funnel and painted coal. He looks like in mint condition. I mean, here's a, a trick I use is um, with any wooden Ertl or maybe even Tomy, if there's like, you know, signs of wear around the cab or any of the black spots around the engines, I just get a permanent marker and, uh, you know, just blend it in. I mean, in the light, it looks like a dark, dark shade of purple, but it works. It works. You know, it's a good Gordon. Personally, I would have preferred the plastic funnels and plastic hole, but these have got to be the most perfect condition, opened woodens I've ever seen. I mean, yeah, it's a little inaccurate. I got two old style Bocos with a new, I mean, excuse me, two old style tender engines with the new style Boco, but whatever. So yeah, that's that's that. That's the end of that. Now why I'm here? Okay, I had to make some uh, up. I had to make some changes to the layout. That the small Mountain Express dollar train set track I got rid of because all the tracks, like I mentioned in the previous video, two videos, fit on the HL scale track. So I'm like, yeah, what's the use? What's the point? Now the biggest change I had to make. Um, Sorry, just moving the big boy. <clears throat> Was over here. My K-line engine, my K-line heavy hauler. Now, on the other side with it with the cabooses, I was rolling this <clears throat> the opposite direction, like in the last video, last two videos, and I didn't see, I didn't notice I didn't see it, but I heard a big bang. The fucking locomotive came right off the tracks. It like bent like it tilted because there's no like support so i moved the chair a little bit and even put a little box of staples underneath for support i even tried to pull out the table and the train and the train ended up stopping here so i reduced it by you know i'm probably not going to keep the tender anymore you know same as the big boy except i'm not giving it to a girl this is uh what i like to call the i spy method because if you ever watch i spy the hbo series there's uh there's an i spy express which is a tender, which is clearly a tender engine without its tender. So yeah, kind of like what Gordon and Henry and even uh, James are doing, <laughs> except they're not pulling anything. The ice by express method, that's what I call it. So anyhow, um, when it fell, the cow catcher got badly bent, just like Thomas when he went to, when he went for breakfast. I tried to like position it back with uh, my pliers, but that's some really strong metal, very, very strong. So when it fell, it really bent. Um, and yes, it's still, it could still couple without the tender. Um, also, uh, it fell a second time, except the locomotive did not fall. It was backwards, you know, this direction, backwards. The freight cars fell right into the drawer, it was open. And one of the one of the uh, end pieces of the uh, low loader came off, so I just said fuck. I snapped the other one off and made it even. So now I'm just gonna have a tenderless tender engine pull three cars. And how ironic! It's got you know Bamba and Tuki on the flatbed. It's like Spiler and CC from the Ice Spikes for us, except there was no low, there was no engineer. So let me uh, run it a couple, run it a few times, and then I can fix this thing tonight because it's been running a while. I mentioned in the previous video, if you run this a long time, it starts to overheat. Like, I'll show you what I mean. Like, look over here. Watch how it's the it attraction is bent a little bit. It tilts a little bit. Kind of like in Gordon Tips the Tumble. I'm trying to find something that could support, like, maybe you know, some more wood or something. I mean, I just kick the chair a little bit further so that way it doesn't fall. I mean, I'll try to be extra careful next time because this wasn't a cheap engine, even though I didn't, I paid it, even though I got zero for this. My father's friends, and it looks like the front wheels are coming off, so I better stop this. So, yeah, that's all for now. Good night, everyone.
<clears throat> I also forgot to mention during the fall when it, when the locomotive fell, when I picked up the engine, the whole like shell came off, like like the inside of the engine, like all the wires and shit. So I had to gorilla tape both sides of the front, like here and here, and even worse, the fucking side rods came off. So I had a not gorilla tape. I used the uh, electric tape for here. And now it just runs with one side rod instead of two on this side. So I improvised. I mean, I'm definitely not what you would call a model railroader. I'm not exactly a... Uh, I mean, I'm a train enthusiast. I'm a rail enthusiast. But when it comes to, like, locomotives, especially um, O-Scale, I don't want to take it apart and then try putting it back together. Because I might screw it up, you know? So, yeah... Um, Forgot that part, so yeah. Good night, everyone. Peace. Another thing I forgot to mention, even Donkey Kong came clean off the cab. He fell clean off.